Welcome back to another edition of Components Breakdown. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 2008 release game A Castle for All Seasons. A Castle for All Seasons is a two to four player medieval city building game. Its primary mechanics revolve around two things. One, simultaneous action selection and two, worker placement. Since this is a components review, I'm going to go ahead and tell everybody the main reason why I purchased this game. A Castle for All Seasons had been on my radar for quite some time, actually just about over 10 months. And the reason, the main reason I eventually purchased this game was because of the fantastic artwork done by Michael Menzel. Um, a lot of people may be familiar with his work, but not familiar with his name. Michael Menzel has done other games, um, artwork or board work for games like Cuba, Havana, and uh, one of my favorites, Stone Age. Um, I've always enjoyed his work, so once I started looking into the history of some of the games and the designers, and especially the artists, this is one that was already on my radar, and when I found out he did the artwork for it, I jumped right in. So with that, let's open up the box and show you why I like this game. The first thing we're going to do is actually look at the box insert itself and show you how all the components are organized. And then we'll break everything out and set up a small little two-player game to show you what the game looks like when it's fully set up. So doing that, let's first look at the rule book. The rule book is a full-color eight-page rule book from front to back. Um, very easy to understand. Uh, no problems at all learning this from the fly. No one taught me the game. Played it on my first instance just by reading the rules. Very easy to understand. What's also great about this game is that it comes with a one-sheet, double-sided um, example of gameplay. And it walks you through a two-player game for the first four rounds. And that's extremely helpful for people trying to figure out um, all the mechanics and how everything plays from one round to the next. Looking at the actual insert itself, the first thing you'll notice is the game board. The game board is double-sided. One side represents the summer months, and the back side represents the winter-fall months. Um, it, this is free-floating inside here because uh, I have not put the actual cardboard insert in here. It does come with a cardboard insert, which I just tuck right into the side. Um, very similar to Stone Age boxing and Agizia boxing. The reason why I don't use that is, again, because I use Plano boxes to store all the components. Because there's quite a few little tokens um, for the resources and the thalers that are used. But looking at it itself, you'll notice that there is four compartments that are um, assigned inside the insert when you use the cardboard um, tray in there. Uh, when you take that out, you have two sides. I have fit one large Plano box in one side with a full of components. And the deck of cards and on the other side I have fit all the thalers and all the city buildings. So that's actually what the insert looks like itself. Now let's uh, take all the components out. We'll lay them out on the board as if we're playing a two-player game and I'll walk you through each one of them individually. So now we have all the components laid out on the board. We're going to go look at each of them individually and walk you through basically what each of them does in the game and then we'll come up with a quick summary at the end. So looking over here, the first thing you're going to notice, I've kept both the Plano boxes out. I've just kept the Thaler in the Plano boxes here. Now the bottom row are the smaller Thalers, which equal one apiece, and then it also comes in denominations of threes and fives. So that's the monetary system used in the game. Looking over here, we have um, some extra components. I've kept the red player and the green player in the Plano boxes. We have and all the different resources that are in here. And we'll go through those once we get to the game board itself. Um, the game ships with a colored cube for each of the players. These are their scoring markers. There are seven individual helpers for each individual player. Um, there are cards. On the back of the cards, they're all color coordinated. And there's eight cards for each player. Now, each of the cards do something different in the game. Now everybody has the same cards. For instance, there's workers, there's bricklayers, um, there's messengers in the game, uh, there's a stonemason, there's a master builder, and all of them do different things when they're played. This is the part of the simultaneous actions that take, uh, take place every turn. In a um, three or four player game, everyone plays one card per turn, and everyone gets to do them in a specific order. Well, the orders are taken place by these helper cards here. Now as you see on here, Whoever plays the messengers are allowed to take their actions before the people that do the traders and so forth. 
on the back side of these little helper cards are the values for each of the different resources. For instance, stone equals 5, um, sand equals 1. And the game also ships with several different winter cards. These are a variant, and that's because the game has two -sided, a two-sided board. The side you're seeing here is the winter side. Um, the other side uh, represents the summer months. Along the bottom of the game board itself is the turn order track. Whenever you have a two to four player game, you play with 12 total turns, and each of these are one of the turns. Whoever is the first player, represented by this large black first player marker, takes one of the Thalers, and that just represents that now there's only 11 more turns in the game. You'll notice above the turn order tracks, some of them have winter cards on them. When one of these is taken, a new winter card comes into play. Now the winter cards are like environmental cards. They happen to everybody. Um, they have a one-time effect, and it affects everybody playing the game at the same time. At the bottom, you're going to have four carts and a rider. These are where the resources are kept. The resources consist of sand, wood, clay, stone, and silver. And the main part of the board consists of all the buildings in the game. There are several different varieties. Now the way the game works is each of your turns you're going to play one of your eight cards. Some of your cards allow you to do different actions like collect gold or thalers in this case. Um, some of the actions will let you actually uh, build some of the buildings. You'll notice on the buildings they have building values right here. That means that you have to use up 18 different total resource value. If you notice, each of these has a different resource value on them. The trick though is in building a building you have to use three different types of resources. So in this instance, you're going to have to use a total of exactly 18 total points, but up to three different re or three re resources at the minimum to be able to build this. So for in that case, you wouldn't be able to use just clay to build it, or just clay and wood to build it. And around the board is a 90-point scoring track. A Castle for All Seasons is not a game that gets a whole lot of play in our house. And that's really not of any fault to the mechanics themselves, because they're actually quite good. It's a really easy game to learn to play. It's just as easy to teach to newcomers. Um, unfortunately, there's just not a whole lot of strategic depth in the game. Um, there's some nice mechanics that are used with the cards and being able to manipulate when you get to play those cards and build at specific times. But other than that, once you've played it four or five times, it loses some of the value. What you will find though here is some fantastic artwork. Michael Menzel is a proven artist in the board game industry and he keeps churning out some really good artwork for stuff. Um, if you can find this game for $20 to $30 or even cheaper, it's something that I would highly suggest picking up because it is very easy to teach, is very easy to learn, and it's not a wholly bad game on itself. Um, it actually gets really good ratings on Board Game Geek and it's for good reason. It is a solid game. So, those are the components inside A Castle for All Seasons. I hope everyone had a good look at it and can make a judgment for themselves. Thanks again for watching.